IRS, FBI, CIA, PBS, CBS, MTV, ASPCA, DMV, USA, NFL, NBA, WGA, DVD, URL, DKNY, LOL. We all know what those initials stand for. If we didn't, we could fail to pay our taxes, not see our favorite TV show, or miss out on a juicy email from a friend. And then there's CEDAW, which ought to be a household word. But it's not. It's a treaty. The United Nations Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. CEDAW is the beginning of a process, an international bill of rights for women. CEDAW develops a worldwide consciousness of the need for women's equity in all aspects of life and an agreement to make sure this equality becomes the reality for women in every country in the world. America is comprised of 50 states, each of which is empowered to make their own laws concerning reproductive rights, marriage, and domestic violence. But CEDAW, this treaty, would mandate federal action to assure women equity in economic, political, and social realms. This treaty for the rights of women emerged from the United Nations in 1979. Today, 185 nations have signed on. Although hundreds of American organizations support ratification, the United States has not ratified it. For 30 years, we've been in some pretty grim company. As non-signatories to CEDAW, we stood alongside Sudan, Somalia, Pulau and Tonga. Presidents Carter and Clinton signed CEDAW, but neither could get the treaty out of Senate committees and onto the Senate floor for a vote. Ratification of a treaty requires a two-thirds vote by the Senate. But the late Senator Jesse Helms had a stranglehold on this issue, and he made sure it never came to the Senate floor. Other members of the committee share uh, a concern and passion about this. The current Senate Foreign Relations Committee, headed by John Kerry, brings the promise of undoing the conservative blockade on CEDAW. Kerry is extremely supportive of stronger international frameworks for promoting global equality and women's empowerment. Barbara Boxer, serving as chair of the newly established Subcommittee on Human Rights, Democracy and Global Women's Issues, gives us a real chance to ratify this treaty. But why should Americans care about this treaty? If the United States, the largest contributor to the United Nations, ratifies CEDAW, the treaty will gain immeasurably in status. I saw police went in there. No, don't worry. Are we okay here? Yeah. Why, why are we okay? The police men Governments who have used the United States as an excuse to hide their own inaction on gender equality will no longer have this cover. It's painfully clear why we must support CEDAW. CEDAW mandates that women be allowed to fully participate in and contribute to all aspects of life in their home country. In ratifying the treaty, the United States would commit to a series of measures to end discrimination against women, increasing access to education and health care, establishing legal recourse to protect women's rights, promoting gender-balanced budgets, and political inclusion. It would shine a spotlight on violence against women, sex trafficking, and slavery. We're very excited. They're sending us to Kuwait. They said our employer would be good to us. Our job will be easy. We will be working as waitresses in a restaurant. I'm doing this because I want to help my family. What started as a dream turned out to be a nightmare. Instead of working in a factory, she was brought to a brothel. We did not know that we will be working as prostitutes. We wanted to escape, but we had nowhere to go and we had no money to go. We could not leave even if we want to because the doors were padlocked. So Ramita had no say in becoming a child prostitute that was a decision of her mother, who, it turns out, had lied to her own daughter. It's the untold tragedy of the Cambodian sex trade, how a mother can sell her own child. And so the girls get younger 
and younger. These young girls are possessions, a fate they share with women throughout history. In many countries, women are used as property, but cannot own property. We need a contract between all nations to stop this historic abuse of women. America is not exempt from these horrors. In the U.S., forced labor occurs in at least 90 cities at any given time. The CIA reports 50,000 women and children are smuggled into the U.S. each year as sex and domestic slaves or locked away in sweatshops, tricked into coming here with offers of a good job and an education, terrorized into staying. They used to hit me. I can't go with can't go for three days without them beating me up. 100,000 or more are forced to toil in sweatshops, clean homes, labor on farms, or work as prostitutes. We have sex slavery, we have wage slavery, um, and it is primarily uh, a slavery of girls and women. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton tells us that human trafficking is a national security issue. Uh, this is not culture. This is not custom, this is criminal. Why do we care about CEDAW? Because it can be a tool for solving these and other problems facing women worldwide, including violence against women. Barely able to open her eyes. The scars on this teenager's face are from an acid attack. She was on her way to school, but after a brutal attack, she's here at this hospital in Kandahar. You know, young girls are attacked by uh, Taliban who do not want young women to be educated. It's not complicated. They want to maintain uh, an attitude uh, that keeps women unhealthy, unfed, uneducated. This is something that uh, results all too often, both within their families and from the outside. <laughs> An infectious disease has reached pandemic proportions in the world. Violence against women. For every excuse and explanation, there is the body of a woman. Oklahoma is fourth in the nation when it comes to men killing women. 19-year-old specialist Brandon Baer accused of killing his own wife. It's more than 25,000 spouses and domestic partners have been attacked over the past decade. Nearly 90 spouses have died. In the United States, more than three women a day are killed by an intimate partner. In a world where wars are raging and terrorism is a fact of daily life, it is not surprising that violence against women would be on the rise. As you watch this video, rape is being used as a weapon of war in the Congo and Darfur. Zawadi is just 10 years old. She was abducted for a week and raped repeatedly. She is now HIV positive. And Basimwa is 43. Her husband and 13-year-old son were killed on the day she was viciously raped by three rebels. Many men in Congo find it humiliating to have their wives raped, and they worry about diseases like HIV. So women are often victimized doubly, first by their rapists, and then by husbands who reject them. We cannot have a free, prosperous, peaceful, progressive world if women are treated uh, in such a discriminatory and violent way. Even in times of relative peace, many cultures dehumanize women. Teenage Dalit girl and her mother have been thrashed and stripped by some upper caste men in a village near Ajmer. Their only crime was that they had resisted the two men from the powerful Jat community who had wanted to forcibly take the Dalit girl with them. All of this is made worse by a crashing world economy. The economy taking a nosedive, people losing jobs, and experts say some could take out all of that stress on the ones they love. If you lose your job, you don't feel like you have any way to control what's happening in your life, then you're going to find a way to exert that control. The good news? Efforts are being made by UNICEF, UNIFEM, and a multitude of NGOs to eradicate poverty. Additionally, Millennium Development Goals have been created 
These are programs for reducing poverty in less developed countries. They target economic issues, not women's rights. But there is no development strategy more beneficial to society as a whole than the one which involves women as central players. The people who drafted Rwanda's constitution after the genocide thought it was very important to make sure that women were properly represented in government. So the new constitution guaranteed that at least 30% of the seats here in parliament went to women. Well, that rule may not have been necessary because when it came to elections, women did a lot better than that. Just over 40% in the first set of elections, and recent elections resulted in women taking 55% of the seats in Parliament. As you can see, women are becoming participants in governing their own countries. Through mandated changes in their constitutions, women in Rwanda, Iraq, and South Africa have been elected to serve in their parliaments in substantial numbers. This puts them in the company of countries like Sweden and the European Union, where women are increasingly political players. Mr. Speaker, I rise. It's a sad irony that America trails far less developed countries in the inclusion of women in government. In the United States, there are 17 women in the 100-seat Senate. And of 435 members of the House, only 73 are female. Clearly. We need CEDAW to help us reach a higher level of women's political inclusion, which has already been established constitutionally in South Africa. There are efforts being made to reach gender equity in our country. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Mrs. Lily Ledbetter. President Obama has signed the Lily Ledbetter Fair Pay Act. The stimulus bill includes gender balance to ensure the creation of jobs for women as well as men. We got a gigantic opportunity to level the playing field, level the playing field for, for women for the first time in modern history, first time in history. The President and Vice President Biden have been leaders in the fight to pass strong legislation to reduce violence against women and to combat sex trafficking. And of course, they both support CEDAW. The work on behalf of women has begun, but this administration has a big mountain to climb. When women still earn just 78 cents for every dollar men make, when one in four women still experiences domestic violence in their lifetimes, when women are more than half of our population but just 17 percent of our Congress, when women are 49 percent of the workforce but only 3 percent of our Fortune 500 CEOs, when these inequalities stubbornly persist in this country, in this century, then I think we need to ask ourselves some hard questions. I think we need to take a hard look at where we're falling short and who we're leaving out and what that means for the prosperity and the vitality of our nation. Women in every country in the world need your help. Find a grassroots organization or better yet, form one. Most important of all, lobby your senators to ratify CEDAW when it comes to the Senate floor. The Senate must approve CEDAW by 67 votes. So call, write letters, email them. Get to your senators. They need to hear from you. Tell them that America's refusal to participate in CEDAW has reduced our international standing and made a mockery of our moral leadership. Every voice must be heard. It's time to reintroduce America as a force for good in the world. A goal is a nice thing to have, a treaty is even nicer, and an international treaty ratified by the United States making women equal citizens would be the best thing of all. Shout out with us. What time is it? Time to make CEDAW a household word. If you 
want to have this treaty, let me tell you what is true. You got to talk to the Senate, got to tell them what to do. They have to sign on to see it, I got to make it strong. But if you make your voices heard, then it won't take long. Sign it, you know you want to. Sign it, you know it's good. Do it. Help us. Sign it, 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 sign it. CEDAW, not a secret anymore. CEDAW, a sea change for women. <laughs>